Wait, time for us to start a live video. Come on in. There we go. What's up? What's up? Come on in. What's up, April? I see you. Hey, congratulations on that property you bought. Congratulations. I was so excited to hear about it. Yup, yup. Let's see. Who is this? Yup, y'all come on in. Yup, come on in, y'all. Come on in. Hey, Camille. <laughs> Yanni, what's up, baby? Hey, y'all come on in. We are going to discuss, if you haven't noticed already, we're going to discuss the nine to five millionaire. Don't quit your day job. Not yet. Not yet, right? Don't quit just yet. So come on in, y'all. Come on in. Man, this is going to be, it's crazy too. Because everybody been asking me. They like, man, you know, I never even thought about doing this. But I've been getting so many people asking me. They just want to really dig deep into the book. And so I'm like, all right, come on. Because digging deep into the book is like digging deep into my life. So, you know, this was kind of different, man. This was different putting this book together. Because, like, man, this is seriously my life. Um, this is what made me who I am today. Somebody said, how old are you, Jamal? How old do I look? That's a good question. How old do I look? So I need my print copy, sir. Hey, Swagger, if you don't have your copy for whatever reason, send me a message, send me a DM, and I'll make sure. Um, yeah, we gotta make sure you get this. Cause 2022, right? When 2022 come, gotta make sure that you good. We gotta make sure that you, you know, you, you're know, you implemented. Somebody said I'm 21, somebody said I'm 32, somebody said I'm 35, wow, I appreciate that. I appreciate, I must be doing something right. But nah, I am 43. I am 43 years old. That's right. And I say it with pride. I'm 43. So, yes. Yeah, somebody said 44. Yep, I'll be 44 in June. You look 44. Hey, I, <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all, come on. Come on. I'm going to go ahead and get started in like another minute. So, yep, yep. Everybody, come on in, man. Um, man, I appreciate y'all for taking this hour. And I promise y'all, we're going to try to do this just in an hour. All right, so we gonna have, we got, this book has 16, and I don't even call it a book. I wish I had the guy named, somebody sent me a message, um, and I think it was a, a pastor, and he was reading the book, and I think he just completed, and he was like, man, look, you are doing this book a dis, he said book, though, but he said, you're doing this a disservice by calling it a book. He was like, this is not a book. He was like, man, this is something different. He was like, man, this is motivation, inspiration, um, applicable steps that you could take. He's like, man, this is not just a book. So he was like, man, you know, if you call, keep calling a book, people are going to probably treat it just like a book. But he's just like, you know, this is something different. Um, entrepreneur, I see that. Yeah, you can go to 9to5millionaire.com. Yep, go to 9to5millionaire.com. All right, that's where you can get the book from. So, man, look, all right, I think we got a couple, we got a few people here. So, man, I don't know how many of you guys already have the book, um, but look, this is crazy. Just a little backstory. Um, remember, I remember um, I was doing Whole14, right? Remember when the pandemic first started and, you know, and I was just talking to people and I was just sitting there saying, man, when they were saying that, hey, everybody got to quarantine for 14 days, I remember saying, like, people are going to waste time. It, that's all I heard when I was talking about quarantining for 14 days and people won't have to go to work. People don't have to, you know, do certain things. I was like, man, people are not going to take advantage of this time. And I was like, man, this is this is yeah, this is something that we never this generation has never experienced before. You know, this whole pandemic. But I'm like, man, this is perfect. Like we got the opportunity to actually like go in on things. And so I'm like, man, look, and I did a whole big old thing about whole 14. Where I wanted people to just. You know, kind of like write down what is it that you want to accomplish during this time period? You know, like what is it that you really want to accomplish? You know, is it your health? Is it your, you want to better your marriage? You want to better, you know, your finances? Like what is it? Like for the first time and probably the only time in your life, you're going to have all of this, what they call free time, right? And so I'm like, man, y'all got to go in. And so I had the idea where I was like, me and CJ was actually talking and it was like, man, we need to, like, what if we just came out of this pandemic with a book? And I've never wrote a book before, I promise you, but I've read so many books throughout my life. And so, when C. Cannon was like, man, you could really do this, man. Like, you could really make this book during a pandemic. I was blown away, and I was like, you know what? Let's do it. And so, we went in, and CJ would call me. We had uh, Kia, who was, you know, helping us out, and I would just talk my life. 
I would talk my life, but yet I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be steps that other people can take, steps that people can take. Because I know most people are on a nine to five. Most people got a job. Everybody can't be, you know, I understand that everybody's just not born to wealth. All right. I understand that everybody just, you know, don't have like a million dollars or somebody gave them a million dollars, you know, like left them in a wheel. So for the most, most people actually have to work a job. But I wanted to show people like, dude, your job is not it. Just because you work your job, that does not mean you can't be half or do whatever it is in life that you want to do. Like I stand behind that. I think a lot of times that's why I stayed on the police department. You know, why I had the, the real estate, why I had the daycare centers with my wife, why I had the security company with my brother, why I had, you know, even while I was speaking. And when I first started speaking, I still stayed on the job just to show other people. That, that the people that say, I can't do this because I got a job, that's an excuse. That's a lie and it's an excuse. So somebody says, it's not that many hours in a day. You know, I'm going to have to sacrifice something. If I'm putting in all these hours at the job, then I'm not going to have that type of great relationship. That's a lie. I get my wife on here right now and tell y'all how marriage is. Or better yet, no. I, 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 Jamal, if I put in all that time, then I ain't got time for my children then. So I can't be the best father I want to be. That's another lie. I bring my kids on here. So what? You don't have time to work out either, right? That's the other excuse that I heard. You know, working a job, you don't have time to, to work out. So that's why you picked up a little bit of weight. I'm, I'm, I, I try to live my life in a way where I try to show people what's possible. And so y'all look, during these next 16 weeks, all right, we're going to dig deep in this book. This, I'm sorry, this is not a book. We're going to dig deep in this blueprint. All right, we're going to dig deep in this blueprint and show you that all things are possible. That's what this book is about. And I don't want it to be about me. I promise y'all, this book is not about me. This is for us. This book is for us. All right. This book is for all of those blue collar people that's out there, man. The people that want more. The people that want more, they just don't know how to get it. See, the thing I hate, right? I hate how society or how rich people. You know how rich people try to make it like they just so much better than the blue collar people in the country. I hate how they try to use certain kind of words and they try to belittle the essential workers of the world. I can't stand it. So that's why I do what I do. I do what I do to run circles around them people that was born to wealth. I do what I do to run circles around them people that went to all of these prestigious schools. I do what I do so that I can show my brothers and sisters that's living that blue collar life, that's got a job, and you just can't quit your job. You just can't step out there on faith, like people say. Step out on faith, quit your job. Step out there. If you really want to make it in life, you need to quit your job right now. No, you got bills to pay. You got children to take care of. You got a mortgage. You cannot just quit your job. And so that's why I put on here, don't quit your day job. Meaning, and people are like, well, at what point do I do it? Yeah, you're, it's going to come a point when you will do it. But when you do it, you won't even recognize it. You won't even need the job no more. You know, something that I talk about in the book, you know, and we're going to go to the first chapter, but something that I talk about in the book is about how every job you have is nothing more than a vehicle. You have to have the destination set for yourself. All right? You got to have a destination. And so when you get up and go to work every day, and when you've made your job the destination, just imagine if you made your job the destination and they're not treating you right, they're not promoting you, they're not treating you how you feel that you should be treated, you get, you, get, you get sick, you get stressed out, you get depressed because you made this the final destination. And so you're like, all of this I went through school. I went through four to eight years of school just for this. I'm getting up every single day to go to this place that, that they don't appreciate me, they don't treat me right. But when you understand that this is nothing more than a vehicle, it's nothing more than a vehicle to get you to the destination. And I promise you, the real destination always treats you right. The real destination always feels good. So when you learn how to use that job as the actual vehicle, it's nothing more. So if you think about it like a regular car, if, I got, if I'm in my car and if the... If my car, if the heat is not blowing right, but yet 
I need my car to drive me from Chicago to Florida. And if the heat is not blowing right in my car, I don't really care. I'm not depressed. I'm not sad because my mind is focused on Florida and the Sunshine State. And I know that as soon as I get there, I know that the sun is going to shine. I ain't going to even need my heat in my car to cut on because it's going to get me there. That's all I needed for is to get me there. I just needed it. And you know what? It might not even be I need my car to get me to Florida. I might just need my car to get me to the airport to get in my next vehicle to get me to Florida. But when you depend on that job, when you depend on it and you make that the, the end all be all for your life, then that's when they got control over you. And that's why I never allowed my job to have control over me. Why? Because I was not there for them. They were there for me. <laughs> they was there for me. So it's all about the mindset, y'all. It's about the mindset, and that's why we're going to just dig deep, all right? So I'm supposed to stay on track. Look, they gave me an outline because they know I get to talking, and, and I'll be all over. I go through the whole book, right, because I'm excited about it, so I go through the whole book. So I'm supposed to just stay on chapter number one, all right? I'm supposed to stay on chapter number one. So chapter number one, y'all, everybody got the book. Y'all know what it is. It's called Cops and Robbers. Cops and Robbers. Somebody said I just summed up the book in 10 minutes. I know, right? <laughs> But no, we're going to go deep. Like, I'm going to tell y'all, like, backstory stuff. Stuff that ain't even in the book, possibly. You know, so I'm going to talk about a lot of things. So, look, this is going to be interactive, too. I'm going to bring on some of my people. Terry, what's up? How you doing, Terry? All right, I see you. I see you. The best credit expert in the game. All right, so I'm going to bring some people on. All right, people who ever read this book. And even if you haven't read the book, then I need you to, and you got, you know, you, you, you want to share some of your stories or share something dealing with the blue collar mentality, what I'm talking about, then I want you to jump on, all right? So we're about to have some fun for the next 16 weeks. We're going to break this thing down. So if you don't have the book, get the book. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Matter of fact, everybody who ever bought the book, read the book, listened to the audio book, please put it in the chat and let people know to get the book. What's up, Lo? Oh, I know Lo. Yeah, yeah, I know Lo read the book, you know. So, yeah, so get the book. Please put it in the chat right now so we can discuss it a little bit further and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You can follow along. Like I said, I am doing this not for me. I lived it. I don't even, like CJ really forced me to talk about this. I lived it already. I need you. This is for you. I want you to become a nine to five millionaire. I want you to become free. I want you to live the life you want to live. I want to show you how to use that job before they use you up. All right? That's what this is all about. So please, get the book so we can follow along. We got 16 weeks. We're going to be doing this 16 weeks on Monday. All right? So, all right. The chapter number one. All right? It's called Cops and Robbers. All right? The reason why I call it this chapter Cops and Robbers. Because all y'all that know my story, my family, half of my family is straight police, right? Half of my family is police officers. I'm talking about my dad was a cop. He did like almost 30 years as a police officer, a sergeant in Chicago. My mother was a sheriff. Um, she worked at the jails. You know, she, um, so when my dad locked people up, he took them to the jail. And my mother was at the jail to, you know, make sure she's been watching them at the jail. My sister, uh, she might be on here. My sister, she was um, a dispatcher, so she would be giving me the calls on the radio. My brother, my brother was a, a sergeant with the state police. And so I had uncles that was chief of police, uncles that worked at the jail also. And everybody in my family was like, on that, it was cops. So we would all get together for like uh, family reunions. And, you know, that part of the family would be talking about our police stuff. Now, the other half of my family was criminals. <laughs> now, y'all go, don't leave me out here. I know y'all out here, you got some family members that's some criminals too. And so, that's why I said, like, I remember, like, my earliest memory was, like, cops and criminals. But it was so crazy because when we all got to, together for the family uh, barbecues and stuff like that, you know, it was all love. But it seemed like, you know, when uh, we have a joke sometimes, and I used to tell my uncle all the time, you know, he used to always, get, you know, get locked up. And, you know, my uncle, when I used to, you know, when I used to leave his house or whatever, I'll be like, hey, man, I'll catch you later. <laughs> you know, 
And he would sit there and, you know, he would crack his little jokes. So I come over, he had some donuts. It's just all love. But that was like the earliest kind of recollection I had in my life about just like growing up. And it was like, you know, nobody was a millionaire or anything like that. We just, you know, it was just, it was blue collar, man. It was just straight up blue collar. Um, I remember in the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, in Chicago, it was like all of the houses looked the same. You know, everybody drove the same kind of cars. You know, the kids, we all had the same kind of clothes. We even had like the member jackets. Remember the, the members only jackets? You know, we had the same shoes and things like that. It wasn't anyone who was kind of like overly, you know, living. Nobody had like a mansion on the block. Nobody was driving like a fancy brand new car. And so it was kind of like a community where everything was the same. And um, I kind of, in that kind of, I always wondered, even as a young kid, I used to wonder like, why is everything the same? You know, it's kind of like in the Matrix or the Twilight Zone. I want some of y'all to think back in your life because I'm going, I'm going somewhere with this, right? I'm going somewhere with this because is it possible that some of the things in your life right now has something to do with the exposure that you got early on? Just think about that. We don't even unconsciously, you know, we do things in our life and we don't know why we do what we do. We have no clue why we do what we do, but we just do it. And so I'm just trying to show you guys like I'm painting a picture of how my life was. You know, but it was weird because as a kid, I didn't ever buy into the concept of the, the sameness. Let's just say that. Let's use that word. I never bought into the concept of sameness where everybody had the same thing. I never liked it. I always wanted to be different for some kind of reason. It was just like I saw everybody wearing these type of clothes, so I wanted to wear a different type of clothing. You know, I always wanted more. And it wasn't until I was exposed to watching things, you know, it wasn't MTV Cribs wasn't out back then, right? We had Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And with Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, I remember just seeing, you know, people just all dressed up. And, you know, I remember like the kids would look at their father and, and they'd, they'd just be smiling. And they'd just be like, man, dad, you know, I love you. And, and, the, and, the, and the father would be sitting there and he's just like, I love you too, kids. And everybody would just be smiling. Nobody would be arguing and fighting. You know, nobody would be, it was just, it would just seem like it was all love. Nobody would be talking about some, hey man, let's put in on some, you know, on some food. How much you got? You know, how much you got? It, it just seemed like it was always happy, good times. And it's crazy because I said it seemed like it was always good times on the lifestyles of the rich and famous. But for some reason, my TV used to always show the actual real good times. You know, with JJ and Thelma and they would, and Michael. And that was based out of Chicago in the projects. And it seemed like they would always be fighting. It seemed like they could never get over. Like, no matter what, it seemed like something always happened and, and would just, like, they would almost make it, right? They would always almost make it. And then the second they got right there to the door of success, it seemed like it just closed on them. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to be like this. You know, it, it, it just don't seem right. It seemed like, I think even on the song, it was scratching and surviving. <laughs> Scratching and surviving. That's the theme song of good times. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's just, and they say, ain't we lucky we got them. Good times. And I was just like, that don't look like good times. <laughs> they eating oatmeal every single day. How's that good times? I'm like, I don't want them kind of good times. But on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, it's looking like, you know, they really having good times. And so I was like, wow, this is the type of life that I want. And so, but yet that wasn't the life that I saw. So that exposure piece, you know, like I said, y'all, y'all, I, I gotta, I gotta follow the line. So, you know, I want to know what my audience, I want y'all to put in the chat, like who on here is blue collar? Like if you blue collar, let me know, like, like just put in the chat, like what's your, what's your profession, what you're doing? Like, you know, what, what job you have, like what makes you, what makes you, somebody say, oh, low said good times not, what makes you blue collar? Somebody put it in the chat for me. So let me ask you something. A teacher, okay, yup, yup, appreciate what you do, yup. Active duty military, man, appreciate your service. I love it. Truck driving, I love it, I love it. Oh man, offshore drilling company. Oh, we got some real blue collar people for real on here. Yes, yes. 
Yes, customer service. All right, teacher. Yep, yep. Registered nurse. Oh, man. See, I got some real... See, it's crazy. Everything, educator and realtor. What we got here? Provider, data rep, line service. Okay, yep. Office administration, truck driver. Oh, man, y'all truck drivers, be careful out there, man. Basketball coach. Yeah, yeah. All right, see, daycare provider. All right, yep, there we go. Yep, I love it. See, with these, ter you know, with these names we got... So let me ask you something. Based off of your job, like like name some like name some terms that blue collar people use. CPD. All right, I see you. What's up? Name some terms, and I'm gonna name some. I'm gonna start them off, but I want y'all to put some of this terminology that we know of, right? Like furlough. Whoever was that that was just said CPD, they know what I'm talking about. Furlough, baby furlough, um, pension, right? Promotion, strike. Like, name all of those. Y'all put in the chat for me. Like I said, this is going to be interactive. Name some of that terminology. These are words that we grew up listening to. These are words that we, you know, promotion, raise. Name all the blue-collar blue terminology for me right now, y'all. Put it in there. Put it in there. Yep, furlough, sick leave. These are these. Yep, yep, TJIF. <laughs> These are all things that we hear about. These are things that has been ingrained in us, raised, right? Laid off. All of these things. So it's like even when I'm looking at some of these words y'all put in here, salary, you know, raise. This stuff actually makes bonus. Just think about the names. Think about the terminology right now. What's so crazy, guys? Pay increase. And you review. Man, y'all coming with some goods. Time card. Oh, God. Yeah, PTO. Bonus. What's crazy is that all of this terminology, like, like blue collar workers, we got our own language, right? We got our own language. But as a millionaire, I found out that ain't the language they use. Or better yet, that ain't the language that we use. So it's a different kind of world right there. And I think that's why CJ branded me the nine to five millionaire, because I still, I understand all of this. All of these words that we're putting in the chat, these are the things that make us, right? These are the things that we, this, that's, that's like our Bible. That's the blue collar Bible, those words right there. Comp time, sick leave. These are things that we live by and you all know when you go to work and you're talking to other people that work with you, you know, y'all talk about these words. And then sometimes over the years, you complain about some of these words, right? You complain about these words. I've heard it for years. Both of my parents, like I said, they were police officers and they worked with other police officers and they would all get together and talk about how they're not getting promoted. You know, they would talk about how they got overlooked for promotion or how, you know, somebody else got promoted that didn't deserve it. And I would just be sitting back thinking to myself like year after year we're hearing all of this. Like, why, why go through it? I'm like, if you know. If you know that is a setup, you know that they're setting you up. Why are you going through? Why not? And I'm not saying quit your job, right? I wasn't thinking that as a kid for my parents or anybody else. I was just thinking like, why not do something else so you ain't got to depend on them? Because it seemed like, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So if Mr. Johnson tried the same thing and it didn't work for him, what makes you think it's going to work for you? Are you really willing to gamble your future? Are you willing to gamble your children's future on some supervisor liking you? Are you re I, so I didn't never understand that. And so I'm giving you guys, we're going to break down the mindset that, that went in my mind that was like, yep, give yourself a promotion. Absolutely right. So what I'm going to do right now, I want to bring somebody on. And, um, you know, I want to bring somebody on and then, you know, just a blue collar person. And, you know, give me some of your give me some of your terminology. You know, give me some things that you look in on your job and stuff like that. So whoever want to come on. Let me see. Y'all bear with me, too, man. Y'all know I'm not a big time IG person or whatever. Let's see. So come on. Uh, I think I guess I'm supposed to just click on some. Nope. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Look busy. I am going to bring somebody on, so let's see if it's somebody in there. Turn off for you, know. Man, y'all help me out. How do I pick somebody? How does that go? How does that go? Let's see. I guess somebody got to send a request, right? Uh, view request. Yep, yeah, here goes somebody. I am prolific. View request. Go live.
Let's see. Did it work? I guess we're about to see in a second. There we go. What's up, man? Oh, Chalad. What's going on? Oh, man. Not much, man. Not much. Not much. Appreciate you coming on. Hey, I was just listening to the S2A podcast. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. Oh, man. So what's up, man? What's your name, bro? Stefano. Stefano. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm actually currently at work, so. Oh, love it. Love it. What you do for a living? So right now I'm doing, uh, I do a material handling forklift, stuff like that. How long so, you been working? How long? Yeah, yeah. And I actually, uh, I just submitted my uh, stuff for uh, a wholesaling company. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I'm about to tap into. Okay, okay. Yeah. How long you been so, on the job? You said what? Sorry. How long you been on the job? Uh, about a year and eight months. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Yes, sir. So let me ask you something. So what's your, so have you read the book yet? No, I haven't. Man, you got to get the book, bro. You got to get the book, man. It's I, I, I got you. I got the book. Consider it done. I'm going to get it today. It's the blueprint. It's the, the blueprint. blueprint. And when you read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You okay. know, I tell people, man, what you're doing, you're already there, right? Some people I talk to don't have a job. You already got your job. But now, what's next? Like, what's your goal? What's, 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 your, what's your next goal? Um, close my first deal. Close your first deal, all right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's really, uh, just taking it step by step. Um, so I got my LSA going. Uh, next thing to do would be, uh, uh, buy some leads or generate some leads. And then, uh, from there, just cold call until, you know, I'm able to close my first deal. Yep. And what's your, so what's your, what's your end goal with that? Um, well, then I want to fix and flip. Cause I remember you, you. Someone asked you a question. What would, what do you wish you you would have done twenty years ago? You said fix and flip, um, and another bigger spreads there. So that's my next goal, and then from there I won't be like you and uh, build my portfolio. Um, that that's the goal. I mean, it sounds simple, but you know, it takes time. So the thing about it, I want you to go deeper with your goal, bro. I want you to go way deeper with it. So okay. I always teach people to have a purpose for every property you purchase. So I, I, I don't just fix up properties just to fix up properties and make a little bit of money. Every single property I fix up has got a purpose attached to it. You got any children? I don't. You, you got a wife? Uh, I have a girlfriend. But you got a girlfriend. Hold on. Uh, I'm 24. 24, bro. Let me tell you something. So set the goal of your life, man. I want you to look past your job. I want you to look past your first bill. Like, what is it in life you want? If I said, I want you to tell me what you want your life to look at, look like by the age of 43, like me. By my age, what do you want your, better yet, let's not even go to 43, let's just go to 33. What do you want, how do you see, what do you see for yourself? Um, I definitely see kids. Um, and I would like to be able to, so I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Like my dad, he works about 80 hours a week, 70 hours a, uh, every other week, sorry. No, 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 yeah, a week, sorry, dang. Um, and so I have two younger brothers and they don't get to do, you know, like had a dad at the practice and stuff like that. And I know it's heartbreaking just to see it, you know, because I experienced it myself. So I think, um, I would like to just, it's something as simple as just be at their games and be at their games, be at their practice, you know, here and there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but I mean. That's something, that's what, I, you know, at 43, that's what, something I'd like to just be able to sit back and enjoy and uh, reap the benefits of the work that I do today. Yeah. Um, How many kids? So, uh, she had a lot, but uh, let's say four. <laughs> bro, <laughs> I, I say four. I'm asking you this. I'm asking it because when I teach people, bro, to, to, to paint the vision, create the vision of your life, I want you to see it. I want you to not just see it. But give it a name. What's the name of your kids? How many kids you plan on having? Are they, what, are they boys, girls? You want two boys, two girls? What's their names? What school are they going to go to? Like, 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 how are you going to set them up? I want you to act as though your children are already born right now. I want you to act as though you already got a wife right now. If you start grinding today as though you already got a family, watch how you grind. Watch how you pick it up. Because right now you're living for you. But I guarantee you that if you sit there with the mindset and, and, and take that feeling that you got your children already with you, you're grinding for them. Because the, the reality is, your children are already with you. Your children is inside of you right now, bro. 
<laughs> you think that? I, you, you, you don't believe that? <laughs> no, I believe it. I'll take that, yeah. Bro, the children are inside of you right now. They're not outside of you. They're inside of you right now. Your future is inside of you right now. Everything you want, bruh, is inside of you right now. What are you going to do? What are you going to grind with that, bruh? Matter of fact, your ancestors are inside of you. You were inside of them. That's the reason why you're here today. So if you were inside of your ancestors years ago, and, they, and you're where you're at today because of your ancestors, then what make you think or what make you don't think that your children are not inside of you today? You got a whole nation inside of you, bro. There's a whole nation inside of you right now. So, bro, take that. And, and don't, just, don't just go about life like, okay, man, I'm 23, 24 years old. No, no grind. Because you're grinding for so many other people right now. You're grinding, bro. So I take, take that, man. But make your dream, make your vision become real. Like, like literally take it and give it a name. Don't just say, I want two, three, four kids or a lot of kids. Give me their names. What schools you want to Start researching the schools. Start researching the houses you want to live in. Go for it, man. Go for broke, bro. This is your life. Go for broke. You paint the picture for how you want your life to turn out, man. You are the director. You're the leading character. You are everything, bro. Go for it. What's your story going to look like? Don't live the rest of your life being the main character or the side piece or side show Bob and somebody else's hit. This is about you and your life. So create your children already, man. Create the type of life you want for them right now before they get here. Before they get here, man, what kind of love is that? What kind of man is that? A man that creates a place for his wife before he even meet her. Come on, dog. Nah, Bro, man, hey. What kind of father You said it. You said it. What kind of father you get to create? You get to have stuff for your children beforehand. Write it down. Put it in a book. Put the date next to it and show your children that they were thought about. They were thought about years and years before they even was realized. Let your children know that I'm not, you was not a mistake. Man, mark this day today that me and you had this conversation and that you wrote this down today. You start creating a vision for your life, all right? I got you. Straight up. Yeah, and reach out to me, man. Send me a message. Send me a message, man. I want to help, you know, help you guide on that vision piece, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jamal. Like, for real, man. This, uh, this means the world. I'm... Nah, no problem. That's what I'm here for, All man. Right. I'm, I'm going to go buy that book right now. <laughs> yeah, 9 to 5 <laughs> com, bro. I'm not joking. Send me a message. I'm... DM me so, so I can holler at you. All right, bet. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yup. Don't forget this day. Man, y'all, hey, crazy. I'm seeing some people in here, man. I'm seeing good energy. My boy Alex, you know, I had the same speech with him. Um, you know, single man, you know, he's doing so much for his family. And I think, I think that conversation might have took him to the next level to the point where he started grinding for them beforehand. And you know what? We're just talking about vision right now. And that's a big thing that's in the book. So, you know, in the book, we're talking about you got sight and you got vision. Sight is what you can see in front of you, all right? That's something that you can see in front of you. You know, the next promotion, the next, you know, I get my paycheck, I'm going to do this with my paycheck. Those are sight. That's sight. That's what you can see with your natural eye. But vision, vision is what you can see 5, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. Most people, when your sight is not working right, you go to the eye doctor to go get glasses. You are, more you are more focused on your sight than you are your vision. When you got vision, when you got vision, you can see so far down the road. It's ridiculous. But see, the thing that I want to show you guys is that a blue-collar mindset, they make us only focus on what's in front of us. They only allow us to see the things that's in front of us. They dangle the carrot like the next promotion, the next step. And as long as you're focusing on the next step, you're never going to get to what waiting on you down the road. Vision. So, man, give me somebody on here, man. And then let me let's talk about it. I want to hear some sight and vision. I want to hear some things that you want. Let me hear some visions. I want, you know, we about to, man, just, man, y'all wish I knew how to go into the dog. Um, oh, there we go. All right, all right, let's see. Send invites, uh, requests. 
Let's see. How does this work? <laughs> I think I just clicked somebody. I'm going to have to get somebody to teach me how to do this, y'all. There we go. Hey, Ma. What's up, man? What's going on? Hey, uh, now I sent you a bunch of messages, and you replied to almost every single one, so I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. <laughs> the Brandon? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah. What's what you doing? Hey, everything is good. Um, the last message I remember sending you about was uh, me being pulled back and forth about me being in the military, and uh, I had a record review with uh, my buddy, and he was just telling me, hey, you're slacking here, you're doing here, and you got to work harder here. And that's when I'm just like, man, I, I'm trying to do make real estate real. I'm trying to do this, but then I get pulled back. I got to do promotion testing. I got to do uh, this, that, and a third. So um, the conversation now and uh, what you, the, the coaching call and you messaging me, I, you had me in tears because, you, like you said, vision. I, got, I need to fo focus on one thing, and that's that. Like, and you said it yourself right there, like – you're over here waiting for this person to promote you, but you got to promote yourself. And just like you said, uh, what, $500, it was like a $400, $500 bump. And you have to work so hard for that when I could be promoting myself. And then by the time I get out in the military, I probably have three or four properties by then. And I've done promoting myself three or four times, you know? <laughs> you know what, man? Hey, man, when I was talking to you, and I, I, I just meant, but so many people make that mistake, bro. Like, I don't know, how old are you? I'm uh, 30. You're 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know how many people make that mistake where, and it's like, man, you got one life to live, bro. You got one life to live, and you can't sit there and wait for somebody to like you. You can't wait for somebody to, 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 to promote you because, you know, they like you or because you belong to this clique or, or whatever. It's like the reason why I want to get promoted is because I want to position my children. I need that extra income to send them to the best schools, right? And then that 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 it, that the education they get there is going to propel them or set them up in life, possibly. The reason why I want to get this promotion is because I want to I want to have a wife at home, right? I want to be able to get, let the stress get away from her. And so now you're putting all of these hopes and wishes and dreams that you got for your family, and you putting it is you gambling? You playing Russian roulette? What's your family's life and future? I see it happening so many times. I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm just saying people, right? And I've seen so many people not get promoted. I, I've seen, but the thing about it, and, and, and the crazy part, not getting promoted is the small things, right? That's the small thing that came with. What really messed them up is that the house that they wanted to live in, they didn't get that. The, the vacations that they wanted to take, that they needed this promotion to, to do for them so they can go on certain vacations. They didn't, they didn't get to travel to these places. And so I'm just sitting back thinking like to myself, like, man, all they had to do was just get a property. Like one mm -hmm. property would do for them what that promotion probably would have done. But they put their life on hold for 20 years, 20 years. Just waiting on a promotion that they never got. And then I never seen a person get promoted and say, oh, man, I made it. Life is great. Then they dangle the carrot to the next level. And then there's another level. It's kind of like, you know, you go through one door and it's like, all right, cool, I got it. Man, I made it. You go through the, there's another door there. Then there's another door. So it's just like, wait a minute, man. I got to take control, man. I got to take control. Brandon, there's no such The thing about it, and I think the blue-collar mindset, almost makes us believe that we got time. It makes mm -hmm. us believe because everything is geared towards retirement, right? So mm -hmm. everything is geared towards 30 years down the road, 20 years down the road. And the thing about it is, man, most people don't even make it. Or if you do make it, if you finally do make it to retire, you, you know, some people are messed up in the body. They sick. Things are not the same as it was. So, bro, that's why I was just telling you, man. Like, and I felt it in the spirit at the time we talked. You telling me you're in the military. And I'm like, look, man, your family cannot afford to wait. They can't afford to wait any longer, man. You, bro, you are you know, in the military. What's your rank? I'm Staff Sergeant E5. All right. So, in the military, in the United States military, that's Sergeant. But in your family's home, you are the commander in chief. You are the president in your, in your home. 
So your family don't have, like, you make the decisions in your life for your family. You make the decisions. So yeah, the United States government, you're a sergeant. But in your home, bro, you are the commander in chief, bro. Your family is depending on you. You make the decisions. And the thing about it, you know, being a sergeant, you know about being a sergeant that your troops, if you say, hey, guys, let's go run into this building, and you know that if it's danger there, something happens to them, they will run through the door no matter what with you because they trust you. They don't just trust you, they believe in you. In that same way, if, you're, if you're, the people that you command will run through a, a brick wall, imagine what your family will do for you. They trust you. They believe in you. And most importantly, they need you. So, bruh, go after it. And I'm not saying don't, don't, don't still try to get that promotion. As long as you're there, be the best that you can be. As long as you're there, do the best. So I'm not that type of person that say, hey, man, go leave that job. You know, don't do no. Absolutely, we need you, too. We mm -hmm. need to do what you do. But at the same time, bro, your family needs you a little bit more. And they need you to go after it, man. They need awesome. you to all right. Awesome. Yeah. So, keep going, man. And like I said, anytime you got a question, bro, you already know. I'm as real as you can get. Send me a message, and I, I try to get back to every single message that I have, man. But Do you care going. if I uh, ask you one quick question while I have you on the phone? Absolutely. Go for it. So my current plan right now, since we're using the VA, we have the VA for this house. Yeah. Uh, I plan on, um, what you call it, saving up for the next VA loans as far as uh, – Moving expenses, uh, we have some money for just in case we don't have Tennessee in this house. And all that is just preparing for next year. And I plan on using the VA loan. And then I'm going to rent this house out. And then that's kind of what I want to go at as far as now. And I just want to confirm that's a, that's a good plan as far as now. Yeah, well, plan, I always tell people, man, have a purpose. Mm -hmm. plan. Take care of what purpose that you put on this. Like, what is it that you're looking to get? So if you rent that house out, what do you need back from renting that house out? And you don't have to tell me the exact number, but just ask yourself, does that number that you receive, does it accomplish something in your life that you needed to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself that. You know, the same way, you, you join the military, not just because you want, I'm sure you did want to serve your country, and I'm sure you wanted to, you know, do all the things you're doing, but it was a uh, 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 it was an amount that you was going to receive every single month, right? It was, mm -hmm. a, it was something that clicked inside. You said, okay, yes, this amount will be able to at least take care of my family. It'll at least be able to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. In that same way, we don't buy real estate just to buy real estate. Because mm -hmm. anybody can buy a deal. I talked to some people. Some people have been receiving $200 every single month. Mm -hmm. so I, $200 a month can't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. Some people have been receiving $1,500 a month. $1,500 a month two, 20 years ago took care of my house note. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, start with the purpose of why you're purchasing this property. You're going to have this property for the next 20 years or mm -hmm. whatever. So it needs to fulfill something in your life. It needs to satisfy something in your life, right? Okay. We don't just mm -hmm. buy properties to buy properties. Mm -hmm. So if, once you answer that question, then we'll run the numbers. Okay. Then we'll that is the right numbers and like i said we'll get you just hit me up and then okay. we'll, get, we'll run the numbers and then you know with the, like the cheat sheet everybody make real estate real and it lets you know if it's a great property or not if it's a mm -hmm. great deal or not all right but you okay. determine initially if this is a great deal or not because it's going to fulfill it needs to fulfill something in your life mm -hmm. awesome thank you so much and god bless you all <laughs> god bless you man appreciate you and thank you for your service bro thank i mean your support yep mm -hmm. Man, I'm loving, man. Doc, I got a, let me tell y'all, I have a real place in my heart for, for blue collar people, man. Y'all ain't noticed. I love it, man. I love, like I said, I'm, I'm, I am you guys. I, we're together. That's why, you know, I am who I am. Just because, let's see, let's think of somebody else. Come on, let's get somebody else in. Who is this? Um, yep, we're about to bring on another person. Like I said, I want this to be about you guys. Oh, <laughs> I, I can barely. I'm <laughs> can you hear me? I hear you now. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, I see you in the car. Let's go. 
Yes, yes. We look. We do a little side job for uh, the grubber. Okay. To put a little money on the side, you know. Yep. To help us out a little bit. Um, I just want to say this to you. I appreciate you so much. You are such an encouragement to everyone. Wow, thank you. That that that's in your circle, and even people that don't even know you, that's going to know you. Wow, you are you are inspiration, and I thank you for that. Um, I've been following you from the beginning when you was on the uh, podcast with Et and uh, CJ. Uh huh. So um, I'm doing the real. We're doing the uh, course now. Go. We're about to complete it. Okay. Okay. All I got to do is do one more step, and we're done. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, my husband's a driving right now. But uh, as soon as we finish that, we know exactly the steps that we need to take, and we're going forward. Let's go. I love it. So we're ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love it, and I love your grind. Y'all doing, you know, y'all in the car together. Y'all grinding, man. You know, husband and wives grinding. Like, this is why, you know, created the real estate course. Um, this is why. You know, I, I put this book together. This is why. This is why, you know, this is why CJ and ET created ETA. You know, yeah. like I said, it's, 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 you know, we let, there's a lot of other people out here doing a whole bunch of other things. This is our life. And, you know, we, this is the race that we running. And the people that we've connected to, the people that we serve, and I said that serve, you know, is you guys. And so this is, it's real, man. Just what I'm seeing right now, you know. I don't even know your husband. Husband, hey man, appreciate you, bro. <laughs> hold on, 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 there you go. What's you up? see it? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, bro. Bye, town in the home. Yeah. <laughs> I both of you guys. Um, yeah. And you know what, too? And I just appreciate you, man. Thank you for trusting me. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out here. That's, 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 that's got courses and doing all of this stuff and things like that. And um, and I, a lot of times I get mad because I know a lot of them are prying on, on my blue collar people, my blue collar family. And we, yeah. we ain't got money out there just to, just to blow. You know, no. just to, you know, just to hand out and, and it's some trickery. Or, okay, cool, you went through this course, now come on to door number two now and get the big boy package. Just give me $2,000, right. no, you know? And it's just like, I've seen that for so many years. And it just make it makes me mad because they 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 like prying on us, you know, and prying on our most prying on things that we want in life. They know we want exactly. life, and um, yeah, it's something, man. It, it gets me. And I just want to say, when you talked about the blue collar, I'm a manager at my job, right? And yes, I gotta put in a request to go to vacation. I'm tired of doing that. Yeah. Sick leave and all this stuff. Oh no, you know what? I'm about to retire. I'm 51 right now. Okay. All right. And it's time to retire. And I'm going to retire from real estate. Because when you said make it a purpose, that's it. That's the key right there. Gee. A purpose for every property. Now you preach. A purpose. Yes. 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 You know, so that's when me and my husband heard that. That right there, that changed the mindset. Damn. When, um, so when you retire... Because nobody get 100% retirement. So in retirement, what they cutting you to? Like, what percentage will you get in retirement? Will you get 50% of salary, 65 No. I ain't going to get no 50%. <laughs> no, 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 no retirement. I ain't going to get none. <laughs> Only one I know that, that's get, is retired right now is my second older brother. He was very fortunate to run into a pretty decent company. And yeah. He, and he gets 5000 a month. Okay. What I need to do? You know, what's the cost of you? Remember the cost of you? Remember the first thing that we went over yep. in the course? Oh, you know. I cost, I cost 25000 25000 That's the future cost of you or that's the current cost of you? Oh, that's the that's the future. Uh, but the current, oh, the current, I would say at least 15000 At least fifteen. All right, so yeah. we need. Because I got a student loan. I got a student loan that's out there still. Okay, well, see, the student loan, you can take care of that with some fix and flips. You know? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, let's break all this down. You know, let's break it down. But you need to start using real estate to 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 replace your salaries, to replace yeah. what you guys make. You know, eliminate it. That's what I've been doing. That's mm. that's what I did. That's how I started out. You know, mm. my, my passive income surpassed yeah. making in the police department. And then when I passed that and it took care of my lifestyle, then I started working on the future lifestyle. Bruh. Right. 
planted my future before I actually got into the future. My future was waiting on me. I already had the money to cover every item of the future that me and my wife wanted. Wow. And it was all about using real estate, bro. It was all about, Amen. let me tell you something. I did it with no knowledge. I did it with no blueprint. I tell people Amen. all the time, I became a millionaire by mistake. Mm. I got the blueprint. You guys got the information. No reason why you guys cannot accomplish double what I accomplished. And there's no reason why you, you will. You will accomplish double. So, yeah, y'all yeah, just, man, welcome to the family. Uh, you know, keep going. Keep going. Mm. Uh, like I said, the number one cause for divorce is finance. The number one cause for divorce. The number one yes. generation of families is finances. So if I got some information that can help keep marriages together, if I got yes. some information that'll help keep families together, bro, it seems like husband and wives can stay together through anything except yes. times are hard financially. Yeah. Right. Yep. They, they can get over yeah. it. But when it's, but when yeah. it's, food, it's hard. So right, right, right. if this information, man, keep marriages and keep families together, man, I'm all for it. So, man, congratulations to y'all. Welcome to the family. Keep going. Go back to that first part, that, that first chapter. Yes. I have a purpose for every property you purchase. Let the purpose drive. I never about the property. I don't care about the property. I never mm -hmm. fall in love with the property. I fall in love with the purposes behind each one. All right. Right. Exactly. Remember, exactly. remember that. It's the purpose that's going to be. All right. Uh, hey, I just like to say you're like a Moses, man. You're a Moses and you're a deliverer. Yes. And, um, you know, it's funny because I say that because, you know, my grandfather was, his name was Moses. And, and uh, my uncle, which is my dad's brother, his name was Moses. Now, I could have been Moses, but my dad didn't want to be named that. So. <laughs> but you are a Moses. You are a deliverer. We really appreciate you. We really do. We really do. Hey, we're in the alumni. We're in the alumni too, as well. Oh wow. Okay. okay. So next call, we got to um, after we get the down payments. So we're at one point five million of my own cash, and I'm loaning members. We got something. So. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. I don't like I said. I don't. We appreciate you too, too. Lamar. You keep it up now. Yes. We right behind you. Let's go. I know you ain't. You in front of me. And I'm right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put you. Go. I got. Come on, let's go. God bless you and your family. Take care now. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta do some more lives, man. It's crazy. I've been all this time, man. Somebody said they can't hear. Oh, can you? All right. Somebody said pick me, but you didn't put a request there, did you? All right, wait, wait. Ten comment, go live. I got you, Doc. Yep. I might do two more, y'all. Like I said, I'm having fun, man. This blue collar. Uh, you know. How you doing, Mr. Gang? What's up, bro? Woo. Good. It's Baba, it's Baba Tunde, man. Baba Tunde, there you go. You on the light now, Baba Tunde. What's up? Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's Baba go. How you doing? <laughs> Let's go. It's the Let's... African king. Hey, bro. We got a bunch of people, man. Tell the people who you are, man. What you got going on? Man. Uh, my name is Baba Tunde. Um, I'm 25. Um, originally from Lagos, Nigeria. You know, I moved to Chicago like... And it's crazy in Chicago, but we still got to go to work. I still got to go to work because I know the purpose for what I want to do. You know, there's nothing stopping me. At two, uh, if, even if it's minus zero, 100, I still got to go out to get the money because if Mr. King can do it from a squad car, I could definitely do it from a delivery car. Like, that's not a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like that, that, that's not a problem because, you know, I have a, I have a daughter and... Uh, uh, my mom is in Nigeria, you know, so it's just like, I don't have a choice. Like, I have to be successful. Like, I literally do not have a choice, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, there are times where even I be hurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I go play soccer sometimes and I just hurt myself, but it's just like, I still got to go out to, to get money because I know what I'm saving for. Like, I know I'm saving for my down payment. Like, I know I have to change my family's life because... 
I'm not supposed to be here. Like me being in America alone, that's a blessing. Yeah. So it's just like it's a lot of people that come here and they live okay and they 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 live the nine to five life, which is okay for some people. But it's like you know, I've seen firsthand what success is. You know, with people like you, with people like um, Eric Thomas, with a lot of people, Les Brown. And I've I've always been big onto motivation. You know, so it's just like I feel like. You know, me listening to Make Real Estate Real and just listen to the podcast, it just, it makes everything a whole. But like I said, like, I, I literally have to be successful. Like, I do not have a choice. Like, it's either be successful or not. So it's just like, I don't, I, I don't like, and it's like a lot of people come here and obviously I'm Nigerian. That just says a lot because anything a Nigerian does, they do it good. So it's just <laughs> like, I, I don't got a choice, you know? So it's just like, you know, I just want to be, I just want to make my family name proud. So it's just like, yeah, like I got to go out regardless of what's going on. And you know, I send you videos of, I would be cold. Like it's, it's always cold in Chicago, but you know, I still got to go out and make my money. So, you know, I, I save it up, I save it up. But I just want to say thank you for literally, you know, sharing the blueprint to a lot of people. Cause like you said, like I'm a father, like I want to take care of my daughter, but I don't want her to go through the things I'm going through. I don't want my daughter to, to to start uh, you know work working in in a, a nine five place not not saying that's bad but it's just like I don't want that to be our reality I want to go through those things now so she could she could live a better life yeah. so I'm just doing what I got to do and it's just like I said like I I really do not have a choice so that's why I'm grinding like I said man I'm ready to run through a brick wall for success you know I'm like Superman you know what I'm saying like I'm just Love let's it. go <laughs> Love it man. Keep going, though. Keep going, man. Sometimes yeah. something, you know, you're young. Sometimes things are going to happen, right? Right. Passion, and you got that energy, and I love it. You need that. But, bro, things are going to happen. I need you to keep having that passion, that energy. When, when, when times are good, I need you to yell out, let's go. Let's go. When times <laughs> are bad, I need you to yell out, let's go. Let's go. I need you to yell out, let's go, all the time, bro, and remind yourself. I need you to do me one favor, though. What's and up? You're standing up right now, so I want you to remember this. And this is anytime you got to make a decision, listen to what I'm telling you. Anytime you make a decision, I, wanna make, I want you to make sure you make that decision standing up. Bobby, mm. never sit down when making a decision. And the reason why I want you to stand up is because I want you to remember who you're making this decision for. I want you to remember all the people that fought and sacrificed so that you can be here right now doing what it is that you're doing. I want you to, when you're standing up, you stand enough to make this decision for those people that stood up for you. You right. understand what I'm saying? Always. Yes, sir. That's something that's a life-changing decision. I want you to stand up. They're going to look at you crazy. Even if you sit right. in the car, car over, get out the car and stand up. Always remember, so when you stand up, you're saying, all right, I'm not making this decision for me. I'm making it right. for all the people that came before me, and I'm making it for all the people that's going to come after me. So stand Let's up. Go. All right, keep standing, bro. Keep standing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm all right right now. I'm like Tom Brady. Hey, I'm like Tom Brady right now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, man, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you, man. Like for real, like Make Real Estate Real has really been life changing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I see, I see just a lot of things differently. Like I know what I want out of life. Not a lot of people, you know, do what, what I, I'm trying to do. Not a lot of people, a lot of people that I know personally, a lot of Nigerians that I know personally, not a lot of them are into real estate. So I just want to be that bridge of you know, even Nigerians or Americans where I could take make real estate real. I, I could do it back home in Nigeria too. So it's just like, I want to be able to be that bridge and that gap for just anybody that look up to me. I'm like, man, like this dude came to America with nothing. And now he's make, doing make real estate real. Even doing make real estate real, that, that's a blessing for me. I could tell people, hey man, I'm with Jamel King. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, the cop could pull me over the other. I'm like, do you know Jamel King? <laughs> they was like, no. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this ticket. <laughs> I was trying to, hey, I was trying to play that car. It was like, uh, I don't know. I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? But I just want to say thank you, man. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity for me even speaking to you. Like, I really, really appreciate that opportunity. And, and there's one thing you, you, you always say, your level of exposure will determine your level of, 
you know what I'm saying, success. So I'm just holding on to that. And I'm, I'm, I'm a, me talking to you right now is just a blessing for me, you know, and I'm, I'm going to make sure you, you will remember my name. Baba Tunde, I, you will I, remember my name. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't I try, bro. No, it, the, the, the honor is actually me talking to you because, you know, whenever I can pour into the youth, anybody that's younger than me, man, anytime I can pour into your future, Right. You know, bro, that's that that feels so much better than renovating a hundred properties. So, you know, renovating people way is way better than renovating properties. So I'ma just keep on going, man. So man, I'm proud of you. Keep going, bro. Keep doing it. Don't forget, man. Stand up. Wow. Wow. Man, y'all. Powerful, man. Powerful. I can't even make this stuff up. I know, I, I, you know what, we are, I'm supposed to be getting off right now. I am supposed to be getting off, but I was looking, man. Somebody was like, pick me. So let me see. I think, I don't know if I can find it anymore. I was going to go with one more person, y'all. And then I'm going to go ahead and end it. Um, I don't see it no more. Anyway, yep. Anyone official was still not on the first. Yep. All right. I don't see that person anymore. So, um, you know what? Where's Low at, man? I see Low all on here. Low, what's up? You want to jump on Low? Come on, Low. Ah, here we go. Let's see if Low. Come on. She might be out here looking at some properties or something. This woman here is phenomenal. Let's, Let's see. see. Oh, there hey, Low. Oh, what's up? Now, Low, come on. <laughs> I already must knew I was going to get you. You got your hair all done. Let's stick on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I was on Terry Couser's live right before this. Then uh -huh. I'm on your live. Then I'm going to get on Natalie's live because it's all about the team that you prepared for us. And I want to say two things quick because I know you're in a hurry. One thing you said, another person said, you're Moses. And I said that before. And you believe in the Bible. So out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, it's established. So mm -hmm. you are leading the people to the promised land. It's in Chicago and it's everywhere else. But I wanted to say this, Baba hits me up all the time because he wants to know everything. It, so his testimony is true. He's called me saying, well, how's it going? I saw Jamal came out and saw your property. So I just want to say, I would have been gave up if it wasn't for the heart that I believe you have and your team has, Terry Kars Kauser too, I mean her heart. And every time I apply what I learn, I have been successful. Because I know a whole much more. And I'm a realtor. You guys might know that. And I never learned half of as much as I've learned with Make Real Estate Real. So I want everybody to know, don't give up. Buy the book. Be an alumni. Get the program. Get with Terry. Do whatever you have to t do within this team. And you will be successful. It's a matter of time. That's all. So that's what I believe. So give me the good word and I'm off. Give me the good <laughs> word. I love your energy. I, I, I can just sit back. <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate you. I just, um, I just, man, just having people, we, you know, doing these millionaire moments. And uh, we go and break the book down. And I just want people mindset, right? I want to show people that, you know, it's okay to work your nine to five. You can still make Amen. it. Yeah. So, and I just. I saw the post. <laughs> I uh, saw that post. And I said, that's true. I can't quit yet. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher at a high school. So you wow. said keep that nine to five, but guess what? I'm gonna retire myself. Watch me. Exactly, exactly. So use it as a vehicle. Use it as a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you are a prime example. Like I said, you are mm -hmm. one of the top students. I mean, you just grind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Make a question. You're not afraid to ask it. You jump out there. No. You see knowledge, and then you attack it. And you know, mm -hmm. and you know, like I was just telling Bob Tone that you, you know, you gotta fight for your future. You gotta, Amen. you know, you gotta go after it. And so just to hear, you know, just to see now, Make Real Estate Real only been around, the online course been around like a little bit over a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Started Make Real Estate Real two, almost two years now. And just mm -hmm. to see now people um, actually executing and to see people taking this knowledge and applying it to their life all while working their nine to five. It's just been amazing. So mm -hmm. I just want to see, I always see yeah. you on. I just want to acknowledge you and just tell you, man, I love your energy. I love your passion. I love your drive. Thank you. You, you inspire me because you have that same <laughs> like when I first started. 
you know, it's easy after you don't bought 100, 200 properties to just be like, you know, okay, it's just another property, especially when all your purposes are it's all taken care of. But then yeah. now, you guys have given me new purposes. You're giving me Thank new you. purposes. And so now mm -hmm. I see I have to continue to keep buying. I got to continue to keep going because I want you guys to keep Amen. going. Yeah. So, man, yep. I, I believe that. I know it's from the heart. I believe that. That's why I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm uh, my, my people you. like, hey, man, you're supposed to be off in the house, so, but I wanted to end it with you. Ah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so now, yeah. So, Love you. I'm, all right, so thanks a lot. All right, y'all. Right, so, man, this was all, uh, man, this was good, man. So, I think I went through the chapter with the first chapter, right? So, you know, just all. Uh, I just want to, man, just like literally show you guys. I want something that possibly I went through in my life to, to touch some of you guys and maybe something to click and say, man, okay, yeah, Jamal went through this. Okay, this is normal. So maybe I'm on the right path. All right? So, um, man, guys, look, this is about to be phenomenal. We're doing this for 16 weeks straight, all right? Every Monday at the same time. So tune in. I'm going, we're going over each chapter. So we just went through the first chapter, right? Cops and Robbers. We're going to go to the next chapter. And then we're going to just break it down. I'm going to, you know, talk about my life. And then I'm going to bring some of you guys on. So the next one is next week. If you don't have the book, go to 925millionaire.com. Somebody type that in the chat. 925millionaire.com. If you're looking to get in real estate right now, Trust me, join the 6,000 people that all went through MakeRealEstateReal.com. I'm sitting there telling y'all, man, this is real. This is not just about feel-good stuff. This is about actual change. That's why I got the book, the audio book, the course, because I want you guys to actually change. It's not about me. I'm straight. It's about all my blue-collar brothers and sisters out there, man. I love all y'all. Um, you know, like the government said, right? The government called you guys, called us essential workers. We essential. But for some reason, they don't treat us. They don't treat us as such. You know, not until a pandemic takes place, right? Not until a pandemic takes place, then they want to call us essential. I'm telling you guys, you've been essential. You've been es essential, and you're going to continue to be essential. But it's time that somebody take care of you. It's time that somebody show you the blueprint. It's time that you, you know, are, are no longer the foot, but you're at the head. It's time. And so this blueprint is the start of it. Make real estate real. It's definitely, that's what you're going to implement. This is the mindset. And then all of a sudden now, once you got the mindset, now you're going to need what steps can I take? What actionable steps can I take to get there? And so, and that's what I got for you guys, all right? So get the book so we can go through this together. This is like a book club. Pass it on to your friends. You know, tell them about this. Everybody pass this on. Tag somebody. All right? So, man, y'all, this has been the first one. I'm only nine minutes past my time. But, man, thank you guys so much for tuning in, spending this hour with me. I promise you guys over the next 16 weeks you will not be disappointed. I got some surprises, all right? So y'all stay tuned, man. This is Jamal King, the 9 to 5 millionaire. Don't quit your day job. Let's go.